Hi everybody, uh, this is Mr. Nolan, and um, I just want to talk to you about the common garden experiment. Uh, this was mentioned in an earlier video, and uh, I asked you to go ahead and look at the results, and what is that supposed to, you know, what are these results supposed to mean for our juncos? Um, that's what I'm going to talk about today, so that's what we discussed in class, and so I just want to make sure everyone is, is perfectly clear, this is how the common garden experiment works, this is how to set up a common garden experiment, um, and what does this mean for our juncos? So our goal today is to be able to explain the logic and methods behind the common garden experiment and then what do the, the results mean for our juncos. So uh, what we can go ahead and, and do, I'll start off kind of just by explaining some of the logic behind it. Um, we'll look at two examples. One is a really, really famous example with a plant called yarrow. And then uh, that's uh, a good way to explain what do we mean by the common garden experiment. And then we'll talk about how do we use the same methods for our juncos. So the common garden experiment, uh, the point of a common garden experiment is that if you're trying to figure out if a certain trait is inherited or is it the result of environmental factors. Uh, so in the case of our juncos, we're interested in whether the juncos are born with it, if it's genetic, or if they're learning it, if it's the result of the environment. So it's really inheritance versus environment. Which one is the stronger factor um, in, in what results, uh, what our, our offspring look like? And these different offspring come in different versions that... Uh, Come, go by various terms, but we can call them ecotypes. And an ecotype is, you know, just a different version. So, like, our UCSD junco population is one ecotype, and then our mountain junco population is another ecotype. Uh, so we'll see this term again when we look at our yarrow. So that's the central question. Is it inherited or a result of the environment? To set this up, I'll show you some illustrations, but to set this up, you take young individuals or even individuals before they're born, like eggs or seeds or something like that, uh, from multiple different populations, multiple different ecotypes, and these different populations might look different uh, or behave different. There might be something different about them. But you take them all and then you throw them into the same environment uh, and then grow them over the course of their lives and see what happens. And so what you would look like, what you would look for in the observations, if the offspring appear different in the experiment, so if they look like their parents, what that means is that the differences are caused by genes that they're caused by some kind of factor that's in the organism itself. If the offspring are all the same, they all look the same, then that means the differences are actually caused by an external factor such as the environment instead of their genes. So it's a really, really simple, very elegant, uh, brilliant experiment. Um, and it started off with plants. That's why it's called the common garden experiment or the transplant experiment. So let me kind of show you an example with plants. That way you can get an idea about what would this setup kind of look like. So uh, this image is the results of, of a common garden uh, experiment, but I want to kind of use this to explain how, how do we use this to figure out anything about our juncos. So what you're seeing on the screen right now uh, are yarrow plants, Achille lanulosa, and uh, we see that these different ecotypes are located at different parts uh, of the Sierra Nevada mountains and then the Great Basin, which is east of the Sierra, Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, and so if we look really carefully, if we look at these arrows, they might be kind of hard to see in the video, but if we look at these arrows, what we see is that generally uh, yarrow plants that grow at lower elevations, so you can see these ones are at low elevations, they tend to grow a lot taller. Those plants grow taller if they're from a lower elevation. And that's what we find out in the field. We find that, okay, well, if we go out to a low elevation area, we find that the yarrow plants are very tall. If we go out to a high elevation area, like way over here, up at the very peaks of these mountains, what we find is that these yarrow plants, even though they're the same species, they grow to be a very, they're very diminutive. They're very tiny. They only grow to be, you know, this tall or something, they're very small. Whereas the other ones will grow to be this tall. They'll be these large plants if they are on these low elevation areas. Areas. But the high elevation ones are very small. And so our question is these different ecotypes, these different versions of these, these populations um, in the species, are they tall and short because of the environment or are they tall and short as a result of their genes? Is it because they're just built in a certain way, their genes are actually inherited from their parents and that's why we see the uh, traits that we, that we do. So what we can do is we can take seeds from each of these yarrow plants growing in these different locations and then plant them all in the same place. If we plant them all in the same place and they still show up as the same heights, what that means is that the, uh, the height is really a genetic uh, feature and not a result of the environment, at least not as much a result of the environment. 
So um, I'm not going to really talk to you, show you exactly what the result of this experiment is, but I will illustrate it really quickly um, with our juncos, just to kind of show you how do we use this experiment for our juncos in order to figure out are their behaviors like boldness inherited or are they um, actually environmental? Are they learning them? So I'm going to go ahead and, and draw something on the board here, um, and uh, and we'll we'll use this to explain this. Okay, so what we have already observed is that our UCSD birds uh, living at, on the UCSD campus are bolder, and our mountain birds living over here in the mountains are a lot less bold. They're sort of shy. So how can we use the common garden experiment in order to figure out if that trait is inherited, if they're born with it? or if they're learning it. Well, what we can do is we can, and this is what the researchers at UCSD did, they take very young offspring from both of these groups. Now, if you really wanted to get devious, you could take eggs. You could actually swap eggs between UCSD and the mountain birds. Um, that brought up some logistical difficulties that they, uh, you know, they, they might have by now been able to figure out. But they, what they did was they took very, very young offspring uh, from the UCSD and the mountains, and they, they captured them, these researchers captured them, and they raised them in separate environments. So what we do is, over at the uh, University of Indiana, we raise these birds, so the UCSD birds, and we raise the mountain birds, isolated, separate. Uh, remember, they were caught very, very young, so they had no time to learn anything. And what they did was they took these birds and they put them into the same environment, one at a time, and observed how they responded to that environment. Were, did they respond in a bold way or not? So what we can do is try to illustrate that here. How did they actually set this up? So they took UCSD birds and mountain birds that when they were very young, and they put them inside this, in quotes, common garden, right? They put them in the same place. So they took a, uh, a UCSD bird, and what they did was they observed to find out how bold is he. They observed things like novelty-seeking behavior. Uh, is he, um, you know, interested in exploring new environments? Is he, is he, you know, looking at, you know, new challenges? Is how is he behaving? So they record his observa the his behaviors. They actually record them and observe them, and they calculate. They give him a boldness score, and they say, all right, this bird from the UCSD birds is this bold. It's this many boldness units, and then they do the same thing with a mountain bird. So then they take a mountain bird, put him inside here, and they ask, how bold? Remember, this is the same exact environment. So they're seeing how do these birds from different locations, how are they responding in the same environment? And then they're asking, they're calculating, how bold are they? Um, and so what you're doing is you are controlling for everything. You're controlling for the environment but you're not controlling for the birds themselves. And these birds were very young. And what they've actually done is that over the course of years, they've raised these birds um, in uh, at Indiana University, uh, and they've actually bred many, many generations. They have continued to, to um, keep these birds housed in these aviaries. Uh, and they're finding that even after many generations of, of, uh, of, of different birds, uh, they're finding that the mountain, the, the birds that were descended from the mountain birds, mountain juncos, are, are still behaving the same, and the UCSD birds' descendants are still behaving the same, even after all this time. So let's look at the results and see what this is supposed to, to mean for our birds. Alright, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at the results of, um, this, this common garden experiment and what this is supposed to mean. So if you recall from the field studies, uh, over here, we found that our Mount Laguna birds had a much greater flight initiation distance. So what that means is that they would only let you get so close, and they would fly away. Uh, San Diego birds would let you get much, much closer, uh, three times as close uh, as the Mount Laguna birds would let you get. So that was from earlier. That was from the uh, field studies that we already looked at. Um, but what we did was we took some offspring from the Mount Laguna birds. We uh, you know, went and, and isolated them. We took some offspring from the San Diego birds, went and isolated them, and put them in the same place, like the, the common garden experiment that I just uh, described to you. And what we found were these results over here. 
what we found was that um, the San Diego birds, uh, the ones in the black bars, were much more bold. Now notice that these look backwards, right? It looks like they're they're backwards, but the axes are different. So the f the field studies are recording the flight initiation distance. Now the longer your flight initiation distance, that means the bird is more scared. Uh, it's more timid. It's less bold. Um, and so the, the mountain birds are less bold or more timid or more shy. But if we go over here, this is the boldness score on this axis on the, the right graph, the common garden study graph. Uh, and so this is their level of boldness. So if a bird is more bold, what that probably means is it will actually let you get closer um, before it flies away. That's what we think, you know, we're saying by if it's bolder, it will actually let you get closer. So we find that the San Diego birds are much, much bolder, even though they had no time to learn that behavior. It's kind of like the plants. If you take seeds from these different ecotypes and plant them, the plant has no time to respond to the environment before it, it, it is a plant. Uh, it's a little bit like this with the birds. You're taking the birds as little babies, as juveniles, which are just able to feed themselves. They're too young to really learn anything. You put them in this common garden experiment, and you find that the offspring of the San Diego birds are much more bold <clears throat> than the offspring of the Mount Laguna birds. What is this supposed to mean? What is What can we conclude from this? What it means is that the environment is not a very important factor for the behavior of juncos, at least in terms of their boldness. Um, it is not learned that the behaviors are not learned. And even after we uh, raise our juncos in these isolated settings for many, many generations, the descendants of the San Diego birds are still more bold, and the descendants of the Mount Laguna birds are still less bold. They're still more timid. So these traits that we find are, are really not very much a result of learning. It's not that the birds learn on campus to be more bold. It's not that the birds on Mount Laguna learn to be more timid or more shy. It's actually like written in their genes somehow. They don't control it. Um, one way that you can think about this is that in terms of junco boldness, they display a very low level of plasticity, which means they really can't adjust their behavior as a result of what the environment is doing. Uh, you know, if you take a Mount Laguna bird and stick it in the city, it's still going to behave like a Mount Laguna bird. It's not going to learn to be more bold. It's genetically kind of written into their behavior. If you take a UCSD bird and put it in the mountains, it's not going to learn to be less bold. Uh, it's simply just a matter of what are their genes telling them to do. And so our, what we can conclude from this is, is simply that the behavior in the juncos is not learned. It is actually inherited. That's what our common garden experiment indicates to us. So at this point, uh, a natural question that might arise is, well, why? What is causing these different behaviors in these populations? If, you know, if we find that the behaviors in the Mount Laguna birds and the San Diego birds are pretty much set in stone, um, what is causing this? Well, I mentioned genes. So genes have, you know, genes are somehow factoring in here about what the genes are doing. Okay, the genes are making them behave this way. But there's there's got to be more to the story. So what we're going to do in the, the coming week here is that we're going to just start discussing in greater detail um, what what are the physiological or physical differences in these birds that are resulting in greater boldness for the UCSD birds and a, a, a less boldness or more shyness in the Mount Laguna birds. So I hope that at this point you are able to explain what our, um, you know, what is our logic and methods behind our common garden experiment and what the results are, are supposed to mean.